episode here for Chainlink Sports, and I'm even more excited for this because I just learned that this is a fellow Joe's guy. I've had a lot of uh, Joe's alum on here, but this is really awesome. I got Rob Scarlata, head football coach at uh, Georgetown. Um, Rob was uh, – so he went to St. Joe's, then he played a little bit at uh, Georgetown, and now he's back. He's coaching. He, uh, he was the uh, defensive coordinator for a while, and now he's head coach. So, uh, Rob, it's really cool to have you on. Good to talk to you. Yeah, it's great to talk to you and talk a little bit about Rockland County and home and St. Joe's and some of the same people. Unfortunately, I know all the parents of all the people you know. So I've been yeah, yeah. a lot. But yeah, it's great to catch up and hear about some of the old names and people that are really important to me as I'm as I was going through Joe's. So appreciate you having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So first question I have for you is uh what was it like coming back to Georgetown once you graduated? Because I know you were kind of a big deal there. You know, you played there, you you know, you have uh some rushing records there, you know, your numbers are up there in terms of, you know. Uh, the history of Georgetown football, but what was it like uh, coming back and coaching? Uh, I'm glad now as a coach that none of my, my name's not in any of the record books anymore. It means that we've been a lot better players. So, right. um, you know, for me, it was interesting. I, um, I graduated from Georgetown, uh, graduated with an international relations degree and I uh, thought I was going to go to law school, you know, went and worked for a law firm down in the Harbor here. Um, and about a year in my head coach who had just come in the year before I was a captain for Bob Benson offered me a part-time job and uh you know it, it's like one of those things never start coaching because I uh found myself trying to figure out how to take vacation from the law firm and and work around things so I could coach and uh you know if you really look at that time period in our in our program you know in the 90s we won another game each year and then went on a run of uh you know eight and three nine and two nine and two a couple championships and really it was a lot of fun as I started my coaching career so it was great to come back. You know, I, I had a chance, it's unique, I had a chance to coach some guys that I played with, uh, you know, some guys that I was a captain for when I was a senior. And um, it was just a, just a really good era in our history. And at that time really vaulted us to where we are now in the Patriot League. So the success we had there within the MAC, and then again, some of the Patriot League teams we played for in the Holy Cross every year kind of helped us build into where we are now. But yeah, it was, um, I probably had the weirdest GA in the history of football. You know, I worked for a law firm for three years and I worked for an accounting firm for two and right. was trying to figure out how to coach and finally uh, decided in 99 just to do it full time and, and uh, you know, go full time at Georgetown. And, you know, it's this will be my 25th season co coming up coaching at, on the Hilltop. So it's been pretty wow. good. Well, congrats on 25 years. And uh, what was that like kind of coming back and then having to coach guys that you were teammates with? Because I know in my school, you know, some guys have done that and, you know, like at first it's like a little weird for like both sides, the players and the coach. Like what was it like for you kind of uh, adjusting to that role? Yeah, it's the same thing. I don't know if I could do it now. Uh, you know, things have changed a little bit. You know, we were moving from, you know, division three to one double A then. And, uh, but I, I'd say this, I really respected the guys that I had a chance to coach um, because when we were on the field, it was a coach to player relationship. And then when it was off, we were good friends. So, you know, I always say that people make our place and that, that was a big deal then, you know, there's a, there's groups of guys that I'm really still very close with, guys I played with, and then I, and then I've coached over the over the years. So uh, it was a little strange coming back and coaching some guys that I played with, but it um it was a really good atmosphere. We had a ton of success, and it, it was a really good group of people. So I really wouldn't trade it. Absolutely, really. awesome. So now you came back to coach, and you worked your way up to DC, and then. I think in the past couple of years, you um, have become the head coach. So what was that transition like? You know, you were kind of established there as the uh, um, defensive guy, and now you're head coach. So what was that like, uh, taking on those responsibilities? Yeah, I've had a unique experience here. I've coached 25 seasons and 10 on offense and 15 on defense. You know, and on defense, I've been able to work with some, some great people. Not good, great. You know, Bob Benson, who was my head coach, is a DC up at Penn now, um, does a great job. And then I work with Kevin Kelly who is uh, hands down one of the best coaches in the country, one of the best defensive coaches in the country, you know, was at Navy and Marshall and Tulane, Dartmouth, lots of places. So, you know, for me, it was an education and trying to figure out how to become a teacher. You know, I'm lucky my, you know, my dad worked for IBM and then came back and taught at St. Joe's for a while. My mom taught 20 years in the Bronx. Um, my oldest sister teaches at Mawa high school right up in Jersey and runs all the math department. So, you know, for me, figuring out how to be a teacher and then working my way through a lot of positions, I've coached everything but the two inside linebackers, um, honestly, on both sides of the ball. So I've had a experience being able to do that. I always say either I learned how to teach or I wasn't any good at any of the positions and they kept moving me around. So, um, but, you know, the transition from being a coordinator to head coach is, uh, 
you know, we're lucky here. We have a great alumni base. So General George Casey, who was chief of staff of the Army, is, is one of the Georgetown football alums. Wow. Uh, a mentor of mine, and I met with him. And, you know, you take this the right way. He looked me square in the eye when I first got the head job and said, you're going to be really bad at this for a couple of years. <laughs> and then he waited. He was silent. And I felt really uncomfortable. I laughed just like you did. And I was like, I had no idea what he was talking about. Right. Third year of being a head coach. So, you know, I'm lucky to be surrounded by good people and, and – the administration here, Lee Reed and Dan Trout, my two direct reports, and our, our athletic director, Lee Reed, have done a great job of putting a structure in place for me, honestly, to get better each day as a head coach. So um, I'm really blessed right now. My two coordinators are people I've known my whole career. You know, Kevin Doherty is my D coordinator, and uh, I used to visit Coach D as a young pup, as a coach uh, early on, just go talk defense. And the first clinic I ever went to, Coach Spence, our offense coordinator, Rob Spence, was was presenting on. So, you know, I'm lucky to have people I've known through my whole career help me to navigate the football side of things. And, and it really allows me to try to drive the program from the head coach's standpoint with our alums, you know, within recruiting, fundraising, those things. Right. So now, now that you are head coach, um, obviously recruiting is the lifeblood of any college, you know, team. So when you're looking at high school players, what are some of the – uh, I guess, qualities and characteristics that you're looking for in a player that kind of fits your program? Yeah, it's all about talent acquisition, retention, and development, you know, whether it's players, staff, uh, your coaches. So for us, we, we look at two big things, and, you know, we try to recruit character above all else. You know, we want the coach that's bringing the person to us, um, like, you know, from our high school, Shane Stewart's going to be a freshman with us this year. Yeah. Play dad, you know, one of the things about Shane is he's a hard-nosed football player. He's a good student, but we're looking for that it factor. You know, the kids that are tough have fought through some things and, and understand the hard work it takes to be part of a football program. So we really look for two things. You know, does the person we're recruiting love football? Not like it, not something that they do, not something they're really good at, but do they love playing, which means they'll put the time into it to develop. And the second piece is do they have the ability to learn? You know, academically, this is a really, really, really tough place. Uh, yeah. We have people who are dedicated to the academic side, and um, we talk about four for 40 all the time as far as your four years here setting you up for the 40 years afterwards. But, you know, do you have the ability to learn? So will you go talk to people, and will you read and study on what we're doing? So really, we're looking for people that have the craftsman mindset. You know, what can they bring to us here? How can they make our program better as opposed to somebody that's walking in saying, hey, what are you guys going to do for me? And, you know, we're, we're lucky. You know, the Georgetown brand, I always get to wear the Hoya head on my chest. And no matter where I go, somebody walks up and says, hey, Georgetown, are you there? Do you know people there? Um, you know, we have 93 players from 25 different states. You know, we have, you know, we have kids from Hawaii, California. Uh, we have some kids this year, you know, from, from nationwide areas. And our coaches have done a really good job of leveraging the Georgetown brand and bring talent here. So, I would say character above all else. And then and people understand, you know, that it's a journey. You know, it's not a uh, – it's not an event-based program. It's it's progress every day that we're working towards getting 1% better. Absolutely. And would you say that the work that um, a kid or one of your players puts into his schoolwork and classes it will directly correlate to how much effort he's going to put on the field? Because, you know, at my school and, you know, just other kids I know, it seems that – like there's almost like a disconnect there where, you know, some kids might slack off in classes, but they don't understand that it kind of like leaks into all other aspects. So like, which like, is that something that you preach with your players? And then like, is that something that you believe in? Yeah. You'll laugh. Saban's book is sitting here right by my right hand that I'm reading, you know, and, and okay. dad, you know, I've been talking about this one, you know, we talk about, you know, the way you do anything is the way you do everything. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the people we're looking for because to me, you know, a lot of people will say, ah, oh, well, he's an athlete. We want student athletes. You know, it is a special thing to be able to do two things very well. So you definitely need the academics. But if you can excel in sports and do both, it's not something that gives you entitlement, but it shows that you can handle multiple things at a high level and do well. And I would say that for if somebody's great at music, art, what you're doing right now, digital art, whatever it is. But if you can handle both things, you know, you don't do a bad job with your podcast and then do go, go do a great job with school or vice versa. So the people that understand that and have that drive, um, the term we use is magis. And it translates to mean more, right? And that, that is what our seal is about. That's what we're about. So it's 
four for 40 for four years here should make you the best version of yourself. Development, uh, cure personality, the whole person, mind, body, and spirit. Sisu for us is, uh, you know, I'll use another Joe's term. It's like pride at St. Joe's, right? You hear it all yep. over. Sisu for us is courage in the face of adversity without complaint. And then the last part of our seal is the Jesuit son, you know, and it's men and women for others. So that whole concept of doing well in school, having to have to fight through things and making sure you're taking care of the people around you, being great in the community, all kind of goes under one term for us, which is madness. You'll hear us use the chase a lot. We're chasing the 1%. So right now, we're trying to control the controllable. We're in a virtual environment. Uh, we met with our players already today. We had an academic meeting. I just came off of a film study with our staff. Right. We're not letting the circumstance dictate to us. So we're really looking to make sure that we're responding to what's going on, not having a reaction. And there's about 10 coaching cliches in there that you've heard, but like that's how we're trying to build it. And we're looking for people that really understand that and can come in and take the coaching so they're better you know, once they're done and getting through our program through Georgetown. Right. I mean, and listen, it might be cliches, but it doesn't mean that they're wrong necessarily, you know, or it's, you know, bad things to preach. But uh, so now you have freshmen that come in, like you mentioned, you know, a kid like Shane Stewart. So in your time as a college coach, what is the biggest adjustment you've noticed? Kind of like, just like one general thing that you see is the biggest adjustment that a freshman needs to make, especially to like the D1 level at uh, Georgetown. I think there's nobody sitting over your shoulder saying you must do this, you must do that. You know, you have a choice. Um, and you can be above the line or below the line. So, you know, if we have someone that misses a meeting or forgets something, we'll educate them the first time. The second time we tell them they're making a choice not to do it the correct way. And then the third time they're setting a trend and we don't like trends. So for us, it really is the time management part of it and understanding that it's college athletics and college academics. You, know, you can't wait to the last minute and just cram something in. You might have been able to get away with doing that in high school, but from a football standpoint and an academic standpoint, that's not really it. So we try to stem that tide a little bit by using institutional knowledge. So right now we have groups of three that are, are basically taking care of each other. Instead of worrying about a position group, side of ball, the team, all I have to do is worry about myself, you, and, and one other play person, Shane and making sure that they do what they're supposed to do. Um, right. You know, it comes from a biblical quote from Coach Spence, who runs our FCA, and it's, um, though one may be overcome, two can protect themselves, but a group of three is not easily broken. And it, it's, it's just this idea of, I don't have to worry about everything going on, I just have to be really solid with what I'm doing. Right. So we build that from those groups to the position groups and then to the team. And that's just to try to make sure a freshman doesn't get lost in something. Or if somebody's got something going on at home that they don't, that they're not out there floating right now, especially in a virtual environment. But I think the time management part of it and just staying on top of things and having that daily discipline, that's where our guys have to make the biggest adjustment. Okay. I love that. So last question I have for you is, and you, and you kind of touched upon this in terms of your, your you know, four for 40 plan, but uh, what do you preach with your players to help them become just like a well-rounded person outside of football? You know, cause you know, it's hard to kind of, see five years down the road you know when you play you know at, at like a high level in college or even like professional guys but what do you preach to them that you know helps them kind of like see like the bigger picture in life it's the mark twain quote right you know when i'm when i was 18 i thought my dad was a, an idiot right now that i'm 28 i can't believe all the things he's learned in the last 10 years right so for us yeah. i'm lucky so i've either coached or played with 30 something years worth of players here so the most valuable thing i have is my cell phone because I can call up and say, hey, Shane, you know, you want to be on Wall Street, you know, don't take my word for it. Here's three of our guys that are hedge funds, bond trader, you know, working on the street. Call them. What should yeah. you be studying? You know, what, how should you be expanding your knowledge here? And we try to do that in all aspects. You know, Georgetown's built, you know, for the student athletes, for people that are well-rounded. Um, one out of every seven or eight students here is a student athlete. You know, the president played football. Uh, our VP played baseball. So having something within Georgetown, whether it's music, theater, politics, sports, we're looking for the well-rounded person here. So it's whoever you surround yourself with, that's probably where you're going to gravitate towards. So here we have super high achievers that are from every state, 60 different countries, um, you know, that are interested in lots of different things. And our men for others initiatives is like our community service, right? So we do lots of different things. Um, Jack Tishman is one of our sophomores who is the first fellow at Georgetown for Team Impact, uh, which matches kids that are going through and fighting through um, health issues and problems. 
Um, awesome. Answer to um, different uh, maladies that they have with teams, right? So Dominic is a member of our team. When we signed our class this year, our national signing day, we signed Dominic first. He was the first person we signed, right? Okay. So um, we work with that. We work with grassroots, uh, the grassroots project here with Friends of Jacqueline. We, we do a lot of different things and they're all student run initiatives. So for me, when you look at it, yeah, you're not just coming here to be a student. You're not just coming here to play football. You know, for us, it's in our seal and our base principles that these are the things that we want you to develop out is to be really well-rounded. So when people come looking, whether it's to run an organization to help you with your podcast or to work, you know, that they're looking for a Georgetown student athlete. And, you know, the place is built that way. We're very unique at our level. We have 30 varsity sports. You know, there's 750 student athletes. That's a lot. Yeah. Really, you know, when you get a chance to choose where you work, you know, make sure you work with people like Lee Reed. Um, you know, for us as a department in the last 10 years since Lee's gotten here, we've added a full-time sports nutritionist, a full-time uh, mental uh, performance coach and counselor, um, full-time chaplain, you know, an extra strength coaches. So for us, it's not just about the football aspect of it. It's the entire department. So you know, that's very unique for us here. And, uh, you know, it just enhances the experience for our kids. Right. Okay. Well, all that stuff is awesome. And I think that, you know, you guys definitely have like a tight knit group there and a well-rounded program. So that's really, uh, it's awesome to hear. And that's all I got for you. And uh, it was, it was really cool talking to you, especially knowing that you're a fellow Joe's guy. So thank you, coach. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We, we won't get many Burden or Bosco fans on your podcast, but that's okay. And screw them. Who cares? We, we don't want them anyways, right? Love it. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Good luck this year, coach.